Yeah, I believe you can shoot shots like Steph Curry because you shot one from the raft to talk about hey, hey, who 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 in is this right here? I don't even get I don't I don't even care. I mean, but you shot with the most Steph Curry shot. Did it go in? The half court shot? Yeah, it go in. You know, at the end of the day, the day gone in. Glorilla was quite mysterious when questioned about her interactions with NBA star Damian Lillard during the All-Star weekend. He said no comment. You said, hey, at the end of the day, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the day go in. It went in. <laughs> <laughs> to behave. You say women in their 20s should display toxic behavior and level up the delusion. What do you mean by that? Okay, like I really like people, that's what I'm saying. People take me too serious. Yeah. Okay. Anticipated game in Indianapolis this past February. The Yeah Glow artist and Bucks guard snapped a photo together, with Glorilla playfully expressing her interest in the caption on social media. I'm pretty sure everybody done went through some shit. No, ain't nobody going through that glow. Everybody done went through that. No, hell no. Nah. Like no, I don't know. <laughs> you never got your windows bust out. I have. Exactly. But I However, when pressed about the matter on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, Glorilla didn't spill all the beans. Be that they, they feelings be hurt. You can't hurt no female feelings. Like, females' feelings is stronger than men. Like, like say for instance, like in the cheat situation. If you go cheat, you ain't finna fall in love with the bitch. Sharp, referring to her public admiration for the Milwaukee star, jokingly remarked, You shot with the most Steph Curry shot. Did it go in? To which Glorilla coolly replied, the half-court shot, at the end of the day, the day gone end. Alongside a photo of the duo in Indianapolis, Glorilla had cheekily written, who an asterisk, 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 asterisk dis is, cause I want him hash get him glow. Later adding, whoever she is can't whoop me, so I really de-gaff. When TMZ approached Lillard for comment on the situation, he opted for a no-comment stance, but gave a nod to Glorilla, saying, Shout out to Glorilla, man! During her appearance on Club Shay Shay, Glorilla reiterated her, At the end of the day, the day gone end remark, prompting a witty response from Sharp. And it went in, he quipped, leading to laughter from both himself and the rapper. In October, Lillard filed for divorce from his wife Kayla, just days after being traded from the Blazers to the Bucks. The couple, who first met during their college years at Weber State University, tied the knot in September 2021. According to documents obtained by the Willamette Week, Kayla moved into a $2.7 million home in December 2022, while Lillard remained in their $7.7 .7 million mansion. They are parents to three children together, five-year-old son Damian Jr., and three-year-old twins, daughter Kaylee and son Kaylee. Milwaukee Bucks guard Damian Lillard opened up about his decision to seek a trade after an 11-year stint with the Trailblazers, describing it as a big boy decision that he stands by. However, he admitted that the adjustment has been challenging, particularly since he filed for divorce from his college sweetheart Kayla Lillard on October 2, 2023, just a week after moving from Portland to Milwaukee. In a recent interview with Sports Illustrated, Lillard shared how the transition has affected him emotionally. It's definitely lonely because I'm such a family guy, he said. My life is my family. He reminisced about the comfort of having his loved ones around after games, with his kids playing and his relatives nearby. During the All-Star festivities in Indianapolis, where Lillard was honored as the All-Star Game MVP and won the three-point contest, he felt the absence of his family keenly. My best friends live in Portland, he mentioned. So I would come out, we would go to dinner. That's how my life was. So, I mean, I'm fine because I'm grown. But it's definitely lonely. I'm filled up by those people. Since relocating to Milwaukee, Lillard admitted that his routine has become somewhat monotonous. Bro, go to practice, go home, watch boxing, play video games, he explained. Seriously, I don't have much of a life. Despite this, he acknowledged the trade-off that comes with such a significant decision. But that's what comes with making a big boy decision, he said. You gotta be down for that and figure it out. Now, Lillard is focused on integrating with his new team and building chemistry with superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo. While the adjustment hasn't been easy, Lillard is determined to make the most of his new chapter in Milwaukee. It's been a real transition, he said. 
being in the same situation for 11 years, deciding to move on from that, wanting a chance to win. And then coming here playing for a first-time coach, Adrian Griffin, and him being new to the team. So it isn't like I came to Milwaukee and everything was already established. It was a completely new staff. Obviously, trying to figure out me pairing with Giannis and being a part of this team. It's a process, and I think that's been an adjustment for both of us. He's used to playing a certain way. I'm used to playing a certain way. And I think we've had moments. I just think it's still a work in progress. As a side note, the Bucks made a coaching change in January, bringing in Doc Rivers as head coach following Adrian Griffin's departure after just 43 games at the helm. Back in October, after the Milwaukee Bucks snagged a win against the Philadelphia 76 ERs on opening night, fans were treated to a video clip supposedly featuring Damian Lillard expressing his excitement about joining Milwaukee and playing alongside Giannis Antetokounmpo. Ain't nothing I want more, Lillard seemed to say in the clip. I told you when I first came here, I ain't come here to waste my time. It was the kind of punchy quote that gets sports media buzzing and sharing on social media. However, there was a twist. Lillard never actually said those words at least not recently, and he definitely wasn't talking about Milwaukee. As it turns out, the video was shot back in 2020 during the NBA bubble, when Lillard was still with the Trailblazers. ESPN, in a move that's raised eyebrows, digitally altered the clip, swapping out the reporter interviewing Lillard with an ESPN mic and placing him in a Bucks jersey. Then, they tweeted it out after the game as if it had just happened. ESPN eventually admitted to the manipulation, stating, We occasionally look to connect sports moments of the past with contemporary imagery and storylines as part of our social content. While it was never our intention to misrepresent anything for fans, we completely recognize how this instance caused confusion. But let's be real, the intention behind the video seems pretty clear. To create a buzz by making it appear as if Lillard was talking about Milwaukee while wearing Bucks gear. And while it might seem harmless, it's a reminder of the blurred lines between entertainment and news in the sports media world, especially when it comes to the quest for likes and shares on social platforms. This incident sheds light on deeper issues within sports media, namely the diminishing space for real journalism. With shows like ESPN's Outside the Lines and HBO's Real Sports disappearing, there's less room for investigative reporting. Instead, the focus seems to be shifting towards churning out content for clicks, often at the expense of journalistic integrity. Take, for instance, the trend of valuing social media creators over traditional journalists. While there's nothing wrong with embracing new forms of storytelling, there's a stark difference between journalists bound by ethical standards and creators focused on engagement metrics. And while not everyone in the media sees eye to eye on what constitutes truth, Using digital manipulation to deceive audiences should raise serious red flags among journalists. The real issue at hand here is how success in journalism is now often measured by clicks and views. A story might uncover crucial information that impacts our world, but if it doesn't shoot to the top of Chartbeat, that tool many outlets use to track website traffic, it's considered a flop by those in charge. And here's the kicker those decision makers increasingly aren't even from the journalism world. They're focused on the numbers game because clicks mean more followers on social media, which translates to more eyeballs on articles and ultimately more ad revenue. And guess who benefits most from that? Not the journalists grinding out the stories, but the non-journalism side of the company, enjoying larger bonuses. <laughs> you know what's cheaper than paying a journalist's salary or sending a reporter out into the field? using an AI bot. Despite the outcry from many as soon as ESPN posted that Dame video, I'd wager they still raked in enough clicks and views to justify it, especially once the controversy hit. And while I can't say for sure who's calling the shots in ESPN's NBA social media team these days, it's hard to imagine there was a single person with a journalism background in the room when they decided to run with that altered clip. And let's not dance around it. Sharing the Lillard video was a form of reporting. ESPN was essentially telling their audience what they claimed Dame said about Milwaukee after the game. Trying to backtrack later with a, we never said he was talking about Milwaukee excuse, is a move better suited for gossip rags than a reputable sports network like ESPN. 
But with actual journalism not lining the pockets of media bigwigs like it used to, we're likely to see fewer journalists and more content creators, and even AI-generated content, flooding the news landscape. Now, don't get me wrong, there's definitely a place for content creators in the sports world. I mean, who doesn't love a good sports meme or a clever social media post? But let's keep it real. That place isn't masquerading as news and deliberately misleading the audience. So, if you're a fan who's fed up with being served recycled clips and stories, some of which are even cooked up or altered by AI, now's the time to start raising some serious noise about it. If we don't, we'll soon find ourselves teetering so far over the edge that there's no turning back. And before we know it, the journalism we're familiar with today could vanish entirely. Recently, JT and Glorilla found themselves in a heated exchange on the app, formerly known as Twitter. Glorilla dropped JT's name on 8 from her latest album, Ethang Ethang. In the track, she rapped, Cause Cardi and Nicki on a track would break some Fkin records slash me, and JT ain't the best of friends, but we ain't beefing. No beaches always have an honor that they keep a secret, slash forever clapping for the next B asterisk asterisk ch I ain't competing. Things escalated when a fan asked on Instagram, do anybody know why Glow slapped her at that award show? JT swiftly responded, clarifying, she never slapped me ever, ever never like you all find you all someone to play with. Following up on her Instagram post, JT tweeted, I've been said she didn't. She the one who went radio silent, played into, released a song about slapping rap B asterisk asterisk Chez. Now it's female unity. Corny. The exchange took a nastier turn when Glorilla, in a now deleted tweet, lashed out saying, H asterisk asterisk shut your dumb a asterisk asterisk up and fix them ugly. A asterisk asterisk wigs. I said it ain't no beef, H asterisk asterisk. You the one with secret animosity. JT fired back, Ugly shouldn't leave your mouth ever, Joe. You look like you were born feet first piece why a ho. Don't mention me. Secret animosity? Why? The back and forth continued before JT expressed her disappointment, stating, I honestly thought Glow was a real BH, man, but she not. She caused all that ST with FNF, let's go, remix, too. Came in the game messy and phony, ready to switch on your homies, too, had to jump back on the roof. While Glorilla deleted most of her responses, JT seemed unfazed and stood by her words. In response to Glow's joke about JT being an inmate, JT fired back, saying, The last one will be from me poking holes in you like the air mattresses you were sleeping on. With tensions running high, fans are on edge, wondering if the feud between the two female MCs will continue. JT added to the suspense by sharing an image of her mugshots with a missing slot captioned pending. Glorilla isn't exactly a bundle of joy. Back in 2022, Glorilla stirred up some controversy when it came to light that she was underpaying her assistant. Now, for many folks, the idea of working closely with their favorite celebrity as a personal assistant sounds like a dream gig. I mean, who wouldn't want to be right there in the thick of things, traveling with them, helping out with outfits, scheduling, and all that jazz? Plus, it's a chance to rub shoulders with an up-and-coming artist, opening doors to all sorts of opportunities and experiences. But here's where the hiccup happened. Glorilla was offering a salary of $550 a week for the gig. Crunch the numbers, and that comes out to $28,600 a year, well below the $31,200 annual salary if you were to work for $1.15 an hour. And that $1.550 didn't include overtime, bonuses, or any extra expenses being covered. Naturally, her fans weren't too thrilled about it, and the backlash got so loud that Glorilla felt compelled to address it on her Instagram stories. First things first, she made it clear that travel expenses would be covered. As for food, well, that part was still up in the air, but ideally, it would be taken care of too. Then, she went on to clarify the job duties a bit. While she initially listed off a whole slew of tasks, she explained that not every single one of them would necessarily fall on the assistant's plate. However, if the situation called for it, they might need to step up. Mainly, she emphasized things like picking up her clothes and lugging around her stuff as the main responsibilities. But perhaps the most straightforward part of her message was when she said, 
You really just gotta do whatever the fuck I tell you to do. Yep. That includes errands, knowing her size for clothes, and even remembering her favorite foods and dietary restrictions. So, if you're still down to handle all that for less than $1.30K a year, then hey, Glorilla's the one to hit up with that resume. So, last September, Glorilla found herself in some social media hot water after posing for a photo with Fivio Foreign and throwing up what turned out to be a controversial gang sign. You know how it is with these things? What might seem innocent to one person can mean something completely different to someone else. Glorilla, a CMG rapper, took to Facebook to set the record straight, saying she didn't realize what she was doing until after the pic was taken. Turns out, Fivio Foreign's all about representing his GDK ties, while Glorilla was just clueless about the whole thing. When the Neighborhood Talk reposted Glow's explanation, Monica chimed in to explain why she sticks to flipping the bird or throwing up peace signs. Less chance of misunderstanding, you know? But some fans couldn't believe Glorilla didn't know what she was throwing up. They flooded the comments, questioning her street cred and even bringing up other rappers who wouldn't make the same mistake. While some folks were upset with Glorilla's slip-up, Plies came to her defense, urging the culture to protect her at all costs. He even co-signed her bold statements about being there for a good time, a sentiment not everyone was on board with, but hey, to each their own, right? Glorilla also decided to kick off 2024 with a vow of celibacy, taking inspiration from none other than 50 Cent himself. Yep, you heard that right. Glorilla's jumping on the abstinence bandwagon, following 50 Cent's lead and publicly committing to staying away from intimate relationships for the foreseeable future. She made the big announcement on social media, sharing her journey with her followers on Twitter. On day nine of her 90-day celibacy challenge, she posted about her struggles, jokingly asking for help with her blurry vision. Talk about dedication, right? Now, Glorilla isn't the only one talking about the benefits of celibacy. In an interview with Billboard, she got real about the challenges she's facing with this decision, but also emphasized how important it is to take a break from intimacy and focus on other aspects of life. It's all about hitting that reset button and getting your priorities straight. But Glorilla's not just making headlines for her celibacy pledge, she's also gearing up to drop her first album in early 2024, riding high on the success of her 2023 achievements. From nabbing a Grammy nomination to slaying the stage at Coachella, she's been on fire lately. Now, 50 Cent's decision to embrace celibacy hasn't been without its fair share of controversy. Some folks are giving him props for prioritizing self-improvement, while others aren't too keen on the idea of abstinence as a solution to personal issues. Regardless of where you stand on the matter, Glorilla and 50 Cent's announcements have definitely sparked some important conversations about the role of intimacy in our lives. It's a reminder to take a step back and think about the impact celibacy can have on our mental and emotional well-being, whether you're on board with it or not. The fact that she is so openly courting Damien Lillard is interesting for many considering how Lillard has achieved his success. Damien Lillard, affectionately known as Dame, has become synonymous with excellence in basketball. From his roots in Oakland, California, to his emergence as one of the NBA's top talents, Lillard's story is one of resilience, determination, and sheer talent. Born on July 15, 1990 in Oakland, Lillard grew up in a neighborhood known for its challenges. Yet, despite the odds stacked against him, he fell in love with basketball at a young age. Spending endless hours on local courts, Lillard honed his skills and developed a deep passion for the game. His talent caught the attention of scouts during his time at Oakland High School, eventually leading him to Weber State University in Utah on a basketball scholarship. At Weber State, Lillard's star continued to rise as he showcased his scoring prowess and leadership on the court. In 2012, Lillard made the leap to the NBA, joining the Portland Trail Blazers as the sixth overall pick. Despite skepticism about his transition from college to the professional ranks, Lillard wasted no time in proving his doubters wrong. His rookie season in the NBA was nothing short of spectacular. Lillard's scoring ability, court vision, and clutch performances quickly earned him recognition as one of the league's most promising young stars. He was named NBA Rookie of the Year, solidifying his place among the league's elite. Since then, Lillard has only elevated his game further, 
earning multiple all-star selections and garnering numerous accolades. Known for his fearless demeanor and ability to deliver in clutch moments, he has earned the nickname Dame Time for his penchant for hitting game-winning shots. Off the court, Lillard is equally impactful, using his platform to give back to the community and inspire others to pursue their dreams. Whether it's through his philanthropic efforts or his relentless commitment to excellence on the court, Lillard's influence extends far beyond basketball. Off the court, Damian Lillard's dedication to his craft is evident. He's always striving to improve, putting in countless hours of practice and meticulously studying game footage to refine his skills. This relentless pursuit of excellence has propelled him to the pinnacle of his profession. As time has passed, Lillard's impact on the game has only grown. His stellar performances have earned him numerous all-star selections and coveted spots on the all-NBA teams. He's not just a star player. He's the face of the Portland Trail Blazers and a prominent figure in the basketball community. In essence, Damian Lillard has solidified his status as the premier point guard in the league. His exceptional scoring ability, playmaking prowess, and knack for delivering in clutch moments set him apart from the rest. His journey to basketball stardom serves as a testament to his unwavering dedication, tireless work ethic, and genuine passion for the game. As he continues to leave his mark on the court, there's no doubt that Damian Lillard's legacy as a basketball legend will only continue to grow. Moving on to some classic Damian Lillard moments that have etched his name into basketball history. One of Lillard's most iconic moments came during the 2014 NBA playoffs. In Game 6 against the Houston Rockets, with time running out and the Trailblazers trailing by two points, Lillard received the ball and calmly dribbled up the court. Despite tight defense, he launched a deep, contested three-pointer that found nothing but net as the buzzer sounded. The crowd erupted and the shot, famously known as The Shot, clinched the series for Portland. But Lillard's clutch heroics extend far beyond a single shot. Time and again, he's proven himself as a player who thrives under pressure. Whether it's draining a game-winning three or making a crucial drive to the basket, Lillard has a knack for delivering when it matters most. And it's not just in the NBA playoffs where Lillard shines. He's also showcased his clutch gene on the international stage, representing Team USA in prestigious competitions like the FIBA World Cup and the Olympics. In these high-stakes contests, Lillard has consistently elevated his game, further solidifying his reputation as one of basketball's greatest clutch performers. When it comes to clutch performances, Damian Lillard is in a league of his own. It's not just about what he does on the court. It's also about his mindset and composure under pressure. Lillard thrives in those nail-biting moments, embracing the opportunity to take the game-winning shot. He has an unwavering belief in his abilities, and that self-assurance allows him to deliver when it matters most, time and time again. As Damian Lillard continues to leave his mark on the basketball world, his clutch heroics will be remembered as some of the sport's most iconic moments. His knack for delivering in crunch time has solidified his status as a true legend of the game. Moving on to Damian Lillard's impact and generosity off the court, Lillard's influence goes beyond his basketball skills. He's also making a significant difference in his community through his charitable endeavors. One of his notable projects is the Respect Program, where he promotes positive interactions among youth and advocates for self-respect and respect for others. Whether it's visiting schools, organizing community events, or partnering with various organizations, Lillard is spreading his message of respect and inclusion. Additionally, Lillard established the Damian Lillard Foundation, dedicated to enhancing underserved communities through educational and recreational programs. From providing scholarships to supporting schools and community centers, his foundation is making a tangible impact on people's lives. Beyond his own foundation, Lillard has collaborated with charities like the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He actively participates in activities and fundraisers to support causes close to his heart, demonstrating his commitment to making a positive difference. Both on and off the court, Lillard's humility and genuine desire to give back have earned him widespread respect. He serves as an inspiration, showing that success isn't just about athletic achievements, but also about the positive impact one can have on their community. 
In summary, Damian Lillard's influence and philanthropy extend far beyond basketball. He's not just a sports icon, he's a role model and a force for good in the world, making a difference through his various charitable efforts. Now, let's talk about Damian Lillard's competition with other NBA superstars. Lillard's journey to basketball greatness has been marked by intense rivalries with other NBA players. One of the most notable rivalries is with Russell Westbrook. These two point guards have engaged in epic on-court battles, showcasing their competitive spirits and pushing each other to excel. When it comes to captivating rivalries in basketball, the showdown between Damian Lillard and Stephen Curry has definitely caught the attention of fans. Picture this, a thrilling battle of long-range three-pointers and mesmerizing ball-handling skills, with both players renowned for their exceptional shooting abilities. Their clashes have turned into must-watch TV, sparking heated debates among fans about who truly rules supreme from beyond the arc. But Lillard's competition doesn't stop at individual matchups. It spills over into team rivalries, too. Think about the intense matchups between his Portland Trailblazers and powerhouse teams like the Los Angeles Lakers or Kevin Durant's Brooklyn Nets. These games aren't just about skill. They're about leadership and determination, as Lillard goes head-to-head -head with some of the biggest names in the sport. What makes these rivalries even more intriguing is the mutual respect between the players. Sure, there's fierce competition on the court, but Lillard and his opponents acknowledge each other's talents, pushing one another to raise their game to new heights. It's a testament to the camaraderie and sportsmanship that underpin the world of basketball. Damian Lillard's rivalry with other NBA superstars is sure to keep fans on the edge of their seats and add to the legacy of this rising basketball icon. These matchups remind us of the incredible talent and passion that fuels the game, whether it's an intense one-on-one -on -one battle or a clash between powerhouse teams. Now, let's talk about Damian Lillard's resilience in the face of adversity. Lillard's journey to becoming a basketball icon is marked not only by his incredible talent on the court, but also by his unwavering resilience in the face of challenges. He's encountered numerous obstacles and setbacks throughout his career, but he's always found a way to overcome them and emerge even stronger. Take his time at Weber State University, for example. Despite being overlooked by major collegiate basketball programs, Lillard refused to let that deter him. Instead, he used it as motivation to prove his worth on a smaller stage. His stellar performances eventually caught the eye of NBA scouts, leading to his selection as the sixth overall pick in the 2012 NBA draft. And then there were the challenges he faced as an NBA rookie. The speed, physicality, and level of competition were all new to him. But instead of backing down, Lillard rose to the occasion. In his rookie season, he was named NBA Rookie of the Year, a testament to his determination and talent. Injuries have also been a part of Lillard's journey, but he's never let them hold him back for long. Whether it's a sprained ankle or a strained hamstring, he's always bounced back with resilience and determination, proving that he's not one to be easily sidelined. Off the court, Lillard has used his platform to speak out on important social issues, despite facing criticism along the way. His commitment to making a positive difference underscores his resilience and determination to affect change, both on and off the court. Now, do you think Glorilla and Damien are a good match? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.